out, very JDM. If you've ever wondered how Mr. John does handy beats. Right, get out of the car, you John. Oh my God, Muzzy. Mate, this is... John, oh, f***ing John. Right, Audi, man, this looks... Oh. That's an auto. Yeah, man. One, two, Good afternoon you absolute lovers, welcome back to another cheeky little monkey episode. The weather is absolutely beautiful today, it is about minus two so we have to be a little bit careful on the roads. Following on from the JDM goodness that is the CRX, I have bought another car, namely a Toyota Starlet Glanza S. Some of you Toyota enthusiasts in the audience will know that a Galanza S is actually the naturally aspirated version. They did a Galanza V, which was a turbo, and a Galanza S. The turbo was a 4E FTE 1.3, and this is a 4E FE, obviously minus the T, denoting the, uh, the turbo. Now, some of you are probably thinking, shit, Monkey's lost the plot, he's bought an auto with 75 horsepower. Yes, it's not particularly quick, but this car is absolutely prime for a 4E FTE conversion. And even if you want to keep it standard, it's very, very cheap to run as a sort of daily usable run around. It's not going to cost a fortune to put petrol in this thing. That being said, it's not massively powerful, but you can still make it go pretty quick. <laughs> we'll do a quick 0 to 60 test. Trying to find a Starlet these days is very difficult. They didn't make a huge amount of these cars and the ones that did make it to the UK have either been modified massively or they've been battered. Don't get me wrong, there are quite a few nice ones out there, but just trying to buy one is really, really difficult. I actually went to look at a Starlet GT about two months ago, a really nice guy, but unfortunately the car was extremely rusty underneath. It needed a new fuel, uh, fuel tank. The sills were extremely rusty. Um, so in the end, I didn't actually buy it because it required so much work. When this one came up, I literally couldn't resist it. I actually know the previous owner. He's an old friend of mine called Mark. And when I say Mark's got OCD, he takes OCD to a whole, whole next level. He's a detailer by trade, and needless to say, the paintwork on this car is absolutely fantastic. He's also very OCD when he buys his cars as well. He's very methodical. He looks at many examples, um, hence he had such a nice one in the first place. We've got a few little twisties coming up. Bear in mind as well, the car's on near enough brand new HSD coilovers. He's replaced a lot of the things like the bushes and the track rods and the ball joints of the car is really tight. Handling is absolutely spot on. Come on, baby. That's 140. 160. 180. <laughs> 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 I think you guys can tell, even with little horsepower, with decent brakes like this has and decent suspension and a nice little nimble chassis, you can still make these cars go pretty goddamn quick. The Toyota Starlet has actually been around for quite a long time. I believe they originally first came out in the 70s with the 40 and 50 series. Then you had things like the KP61, which I actually used to own, which was rear wheel drive. Then in the late 70s, early 80s came the very first turbo model. It was called a Turbo S, which was an EP71. After this, a lot of manufacturers kind of went turbo crazy. 
Uh, they then brought out the EP82 GT, which I used to have as well. They did quite a few different variations in the models. Then they brought out the EP91, which is this one. These were actually made in the UK as well. I know a lot of you have probably seen EP91 sort of driving around. They never did a turbo variant that was only reserved for the Japanese market. Right, flat out. I'll just do a quick little stop because the car looked pretty cool in the start. I'm going to head up to the farm in a bit and give it a proper good clean. Mark would probably turn in his grave. Wheels actually aren't Enkies, they're JR Racing replicas. Probably because the Enkies cost an absolute fortune, but they do look very in keeping with the old Starlet. Definitely a nice wheel that really suits it. That's the little hump in the bonnet. You don't get that on the UK ones, that's actually specific to the Japanese import ones. You get things like the spotlights and this little lower trim as well, so it's quite a bit different from the UK one. I believe some of the UK ones actually had orange indicators as well, whereas these have got clear indicators with orange bulbs inside. And then the Glanza lights are also slightly different as well. You also get this lovely little front grille with a nice little Glanza badge. Rear lights look really cool. That's the TRD exhaust that I was mentioning to you guys in the car, which really does look like a nice size for the Starlet. Original Glanza rear spoiler, which was another feature of the Japanese one, which you uh, didn't find on the UK models. Rear bumpers are also slightly different. You get this nice little lip at the bottom, which kind of sort of splays out a little bit and makes the car look a little bit more aggressive from the back. You can see there as well, metallic black paintwork. The car is in really, really mint condition factory tinted rear windows as well which is pretty nice interior is lovely original glands and seats some of the ep91 ones in the uk did come with really really sort of crazy grandmother interior so these glands are definitely a little bit smarter quick little look in the back not a massive amount of room in these but definitely enough if you want to put someone in there for short journeys you've got a cheeky pair of six by nines on the rear parcel shelf personal steering wheel and this looks really nice you've also got things like power steering and those are the glands clocks complete with the turbo gauges like I said to you guys earlier in the video but yeah quite nice it's got that little feature Marky also put a double din stereo in the car it doesn't actually work at the moment we'll have a little look at it at Scouts at some point see if we can get it going also has air conditioning you'll find a lot of these Japanese imports did kind of come with this stuff um, standard from factory and the aircon on this is also ice cold as well he's also got electric mirrors and folding mirrors as well check that out very JDM and there we have 140 FE. They are slightly different than the Japanese ones. They actually have a slightly different intake manifold, which I believe gives them a little bit extra horsepower. That's actually quite a popular conversion on the UK style to swap the intake manifolds over. Engine bay is fantastically clean. The bulkhead is spotless. There's not a single bit of rust on this car. The strut brakes actually came from factory. All the Glanzer models had a front factory strut brakes. You can see the BC coilovers as well. All the top mounts are quite literally brand new. I think you guys can kind of see though that this car really is not only extremely rare, but also in very, very nice condition. We're gonna head back to the farm now, give the car a nice little spruce, like I said, just to get in cool for the, uh, get a call for all the pictures. We'll go and see the boys and yeah, send it. If you've ever wondered how Mr. John does handy bees, even in an automatic, you can do a quick little cheeky turn in the road. If you need to go the other way, the main principle is a little bit of speed, uh, lock the handbrake before you turn, lock the handbrake, little jab on the steering wheel, and then if you want the car to really pirouette round as you're sliding, you put your foot on the foot brake, which kind of pushes the weight of the car over the front, and that kind of makes it spin a little bit more round in a circle. Hopefully that gives you a rough idea. We'll do a quick little demonstration. Right, Mr. John, you get in the driver's seat, mate. Very quiet today, aren't you, John? Right, get out of the car, you prick, John. Right, I'm back here, guys. Sorry about that. Fucking John, mate. Nightmare. Sick handy bee, though, to be fair. It's a little bit icy. Ah! <laughs> yeah! This Starbo drives absolutely beautiful as well. There's no sort of interior creaks. Um, the car doesn't tram line everywhere. Mark set the suspension up really nice, and he was telling me he had all the geometry and the tracking um, all sorted, all aligned about a month ago, which is pretty nice, which means anyone that wins this won't have to do anything to this car. It has actually run out of MOT. I'm gonna stick a ticket on it, and I've had a really good look around the car, and it literally shouldn't fail on anything. It's, it's, it's quite literally spotless. <laughs> Mate, this thing's a little rocket. If you kind of wind it up and 
utilize every single percentage of the of the power you can get it to be um, pretty darn rapid here we are at ye old farm oh muzzy's got a pretty sick laurel i'm just gonna have a quick little stop have a goosey gander oh look at this I'll be goodness, cheeky looking Laurel in Muzzy's unit. Many parts galore, I think he's having a massive clear out at the moment. Pillarless windows, gauges down the front. Got right. Muzzy! How you doing mate? Right. I just spotted this Laurel, Charlie. You good mate? Waste man. I just spotted the Laurel. Yes. Oh my god Muzzy. This is like a limousine. Mate, this is, this is luxury man. What motor's up front? RB20? RB20. With a what turbo? A big HK turbo. Oh man, this is proper cool. So if you've never seen the inside of Laurel, you have now. If you guys look at the front, it's missing the front seats. Muzzy's actually about to fit a set of bucket seats in it. It's also got loads of gauges down here as well. Very pimp, Muzzy. Is it sold already? Um, no, it'll be up for sale. Oh, yeah. How much? Uh, about 10. Oh, right. Monkey special price? Yeah, yeah, of course. Next raffle? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Got some pretty mad stereo in the back as well. Kenwood. What's that, an amp or a CD player? Uh, amp. That's uh, an amp? Yeah. Crazy, man. I love these old Jack VIP wagons. Yeah. Rims are lovely, raised gram lights. Very pimp, Muzzy. HKS time, HKS yeah. filter. Spitfire cool packs. Yep. Oil filter relocation, Cusco strut brace. Just sort of simple, simple yeah. mods. Muzzy? I love it, yes, love mate. it. That is gorgeous. Gla it's, a, it's a Glanzer X. Oh wow, nice. Obviously right for a turbo conversion. Oh great. I was saying to the audience as well, to find a Glanzer in this condition, the, these days is it's very, impossible. very rare. Very, very, very rare. So what, your mum can take it out to, 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 to do a daily shop? Shopping, yeah, and then yeah. Tom can get in the evening and have a little rag There fight. you go, yeah, that's Happy brilliant, days. mate. Don't forget as well, Muz has a lot of Zeknova tyres in stock, so if you need the bestest tyres in the world, give him a shout. And a very nice Recaro as well. SR7. Sold? Sold, yeah. Nice man. Yeah, I'm gonna carry on with the glands there. Come and have a coffee in a bit. Brilliant. Brilliant. Savage. Just spotted a chap as well. There's a new business up here and he's got a pretty cool looking Audi. Looks pretty, pretty mad. He's just gonna go and grab the key and give us a quick little look around. Forgot to mention as well with the bonnet bolt, like I said, the glands of these do have a scoop because they've actually originally got a top mounted intercooler. That obviously allows air to drool into the intercooler. Once you run a front mount now, you don't really need the bonnet scoop. So if you do win this car and you do decide to convert it to turbo, it might be a cool idea just to leave the glands at S bonnet and get a front mounted intercooler instead. John, ah, oh, fucking John. Right, Audi, man, this looks fast. Uh, it's 270 brake mapped by Tuning Technics. And I can see for a start different brakes on the front. Yeah, so they're the Cooper R brakes. So you've obviously saved a lot of weight. Yes, massively, yeah. Out. So uh, it compensates for my stomach. Um, <laughs> just fully stripped. Caged by Tyler Motorsport in Bracknell. Um, did a massively good price, so, so big up to them for doing that. All internals, all standard, yeah. Um, and they so can take the abuse? It can. Yeah, it's um, so, so this is the lobby to get in like the Audi TTs. Exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah so got you. it is, it's an ARY engine code, BAM intake manifold, and the charge pipe off the S3 and swapped it over because originally mine went down this way. Ah, all right. As I had a single intercooler, I've now got a front mount welly. Sizable front mount out the front. Uh, it's got the KO4 023, so off the S3 and the TT. That I originally had a KO3S. Um, which I was thinking made, that's quite, they're a bit, little bit restrictive, the original turbos. Yeah, I think they're only good for just touching 300, something around that mark. Yeah, they're quite sort of highly strong at that. Yeah, so this is lower boost, no lag, no nothing like that. So Ooh. it's um, it's quick, it's just got a clutch problem at the moment because it's struggling because it's four wheel drive. So it's one of the last few ones that are ah. A3 Quattro. I was going to say, you'd be doing them, them gnarly seven grand launches. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's got launch <laughs> control, um, so it does pop and bang off the launch and it does quattro spin it's got the gem one haldex um so it takes like 95 percent front wheel drive and then after the 10 percent slip at the front it then sends power to the back to the back that's quite cool man hopefully i'm applying for my race license next month um i'll be racing in 750 clubs in road sport series Sick, man. msa massive yes fair exactly. play to you yeah i've done a couple of track days now it's all road legal it's yeah nuts it's cool man it's nice to see because i mean a lot of the chaps that buy audis they're on air ride and and putting big deep dish rims whereas this yeah. is an all-out sort of not a track toy it's an everyday car it's but an every, yeah, yeah, yeah it's got it's, a um, purpose yeah exactly it's, quickly show you guys the interior like john was saying completely stripped out you've got a fairly sizable bucket seat and one for the passenger as well in the back you can see he's got a full welding roll cage as well definitely looks like it's quick and it handles well it yeah it, it, it doesn't lose grip anywhere no. brilliant <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, John. 
That is, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty loud. <laughs> Crazy sounds, man. Yeah. Warren's also got a Glanza V yep. turbo Import. and fully forged. It is, yeah, yeah. With a big whistler on it. A big one, GT28. What sort of horsepower are you expecting? Three, oh, uh, 330, 340. I think anything more than that probably be unusable. <laughs> I think even the 300 mark would probably be unusable. Yeah, be bit of a wheel spin machine. Yeah, yeah, they are. Even at 200 horsepower, as you probably have seen before, they're yeah. ridiculous. What do you reckon these things weigh? Like eight, 900 kilos? Probably around that figure, yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely about 800 kilos. So. Yeah. So Especially we're... stripped out and they got nothing inside them. So. Yeah, so with yeah. 340 horsepower, it's probably about 400 brake per tonne. Yes. Yeah, yeah, pretty quick. <laughs> right, lovely. So I'm going to go and do some work. Lovely to meet you, Mr. John. You Mr. Warren, Cheers. absolute legend. Cheers, Cheers One little starlet safely arrived at the farm. Just going to do a couple of cheeky exhaust revs so you guys can hear what she sounds like. And I actually forgot to mention as well, it's also got an HKS panel filter. It's quite cool. Mark's left the stock airbox in there. <laughs> Best looking man on the farm. <laughs> How are you, geezer? Beautiful cars in the car park. S15, another PS right here, which you guys saw before. Covered in snow. It's got a little bit less snow on it today, which is pretty sweet. 180SX in the corner. Oh, Charlie's R34 looking beautiful. Love the back lights on these, very Ferrari-esque. R32, R32 and Pulsar, which you guys have seen before. Anyway, enough jibber-jabber. I'm going to clean up the glands and now and then go and take some cool pictures for the website. Sick. Car is looking much better. Big up Wasteman for the uh, cup of tea, absolute legend. Pretty goddamn ream. It was quite hard to clean it because it's so cold. But she's definitely looking 10 times better. <laughs> I thought I'd rescue you from the S15. <laughs> if you're wondering why Scouse is looking a little bit solemn today, it's because he's been grinding, welding, cleaning. Don't have good uniform when you're <laughs> welding. You kind of discovered there was a lot more holes in Bad it bits. than you thought. Yeah, I hate it. I don't officially do rust repairs. <laughs> Somehow I'm doing them. So yeah, if you guys want to get your rust <laughs> no, repairs no. done, cut us a performance. <laughs> what do you think, man? I'll quickly show you the uh, new purchase. I genuine wheels. Yeah. Oi, shut <laughs> up, man. <laughs> You done any work on these before? Yes. You have. Yeah. But this, these ones, Glanzers or the earlier EP82s? Yeah, Glanzer. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, an auto. Yeah, man. She's <laughs> auto. Hence, I was doing uh, burnouts on the ice. How clean is it? Fucking lovely, mate. It's mint. Yeah, absolutely mint. Like I was saying to you guys in the audience, it is an auto. It is an NA. But trying to find a Glanzer, let alone one in this condition, is pretty much impossible. So whoever wins this car is going to be extremely happy. What a lovely car. Well, it was lovely until John got his hands on it. Now we've given it a good clean as well. You can really kind of see how clean the paintwork is on this. There's a tiny little pendant there. I noticed this rear trim as well needs a little paint. It's actually a separate piece. You can kind of remove that and give it a paint. Apart from that though, pretty goddamn immaculate. That should give you guys a good little overview on the latest purchase, a lovely little Glanzer S. That pretty much wraps up today's episode. We're going to quickly pop inside and show you what Scouse has been dealing with. We want to end this on a positive note though, Scouse. Crazy, isn't it? You've got the whole subframe off, rear axle's gone. That was the problem area. So they're all the bits you're basically cutting out and then you're going to make up kind of plates to put back over yeah, it. Yeah, so that will look like that. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, let's have a look. Show the audience. So yeah, that's all the rust that Scouse has currently cut out. And then when it's finished, it will look something like that. And I guess these corner bits here, a lot of water kind of ingresses and gets stuck inside and it kind yeah, of doesn't really drain. Yeah, just inside there and just, yeah, just absolutely rots the hell out of it. That gives you an idea what Japanese metal looks like once it's had a bit of uh, water corrosion. The seals don't look horrendous. There's a bit of sort of surface in the corner, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, this one here, it's got a hole there. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, look at that, man. The problem with the rust is once it starts, you've got to really get on top of it and treat it. Otherwise it gets like this. I don't know how many years this has been in the UK, yeah. but 
it's got really bad really quickly. Generally, I'd say you've probably got a couple of years once you've imported it. If you don't underseal it within a couple of years, yeah, this start doing happens. must repairs, like start factoring that in in cost, and it's just get undersealed early, don't have to pay the rust yeah. repair bills later on. Ooh. Oh, lovely. Ooh, they look nice and so fresh. So basically, this has had, you can see down there, some of the parts, this has had everything yeah, blasted every, and painted by every James. Every single piece. It looks so much better once they get all these bits on. I'll chuck Jamesy's Insta Blips down here. If you want to get your bits painted, feel free to give him a shout. Jamesy, see you Monday. Scousey's all of a sudden very happy because it's nearly home time. <laughs> <laughs> Catch up with you tomorrow. That pretty much wraps up today's episode. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the new addition to the channel, the cheeky little glanza, absolutely spiffing. I'm gonna be back tomorrow doing a few cheeky bits on the Blister Compact. Give us a like, put in your comments down below, I'll do my best to get back to you, and yeah, see you soon.